we'll now be having a closer look at the anatomy and adaptations of muscles. I'll be using the green lip mussel from New Zealand. If you're working with a different species for your investigation, you can still use this video as reference material. Both the anatomy and adaptations of mussels are quite similar between species. So let's get started. Now we'll just start by having a look at the different layers that these shells are made up of, which is three different layers. And the outer layer, this right here, is called the periostracum. And the periostracum is completely made up of organic uh, material, a protein, meaning that it's very much like our skin protecting whatever is underneath. And the periostracum itself is protecting the next uh, harder layer, which is here. You can see this right along. And that layer is called the prismatic layer that's made up of calcium carbonate and protein. And then the inner layer itself is something that you might uh, recognize from a lot of different shells, especially power. It is the nacre or mother of pearl. And I just have a power shell right here so you can see this um, very glycerin part here, but you can see the inner, inner layer of shells. The shell itself is not only a protection for the muscle, but it's also home for other types of animals. So you can see right here that we have some tube worms growing and we also have barnacles, actually many of them sitting right here that have attached to this, this muscle. So the shells does serve a purpose in terms of protecting the muscle, the, the soft parts that are inside the muscle, but they also create this habitat, like microhabitat, to, to form homes and, and places to grow for other animals. The class bivalves is where, where mussels come in. And the reason for that is that bi means two and valve means shell. Um, so they have two shells right here, one there and one there. And they're attached down here at the bottom with ligaments that kind of serves as a glue holding the shells together. But the majority of the strength actually comes from inside. So we'll have a look at that in a moment. If you take a closer look, you can see that this muscle here actually has a lot of um, bristle threads. So these bristle threads are because other muscles have attached themselves to, to this one. So it's not something that this has formed, because as you can see, this, for example, is attached right down here. But the bristle threads from this muscle will come out from right here. There's none right now, because they were taken off when I removed the muscle, but we might see some when we open it up in a moment. So the bristle threads are made of carotene and protein and it's secreted by a gland that is in the foot. So this type of bivalve, they attach themselves to rocks with the bristle threads, but other types of bivalves such as, as the cockles, well, they will bury themselves down in the sand using their foot. Before we open up the muscle, I just want to show you some of the reactions that it can have. So I took, just took it out of its water bowl there you go, and it opened up and just kind of had a, a, you can kind of say a deep breath in to analyze what was going on around. Is there water coming in? Is there air coming in? And then immediately closed down, most likely as a response to the fact that it was out in air. And the reason why they do this is because that this shell or these shells are completely air and water tight, meaning that when it closes completely down and locks its soft body tissue inside, it cannot really know what's going on around it because it's too risky having sensory organs outside of the shell. So in order for the muscle to actually figure out what's going on around it, it must once in a while just open up and kind of take in the surroundings, figure out what's going on, and then close down again if it needs to. So in this video right here, you can actually see the two siphons 
the inhalant and exhalant siphons of muscles. And I can see just by looking at the two different structures of these siphons, I know which one is the inhalant and which one is the exhalant. So the one that you can see closest to you, you can kind of see that the edges around this tunnel shaped siphon is quite smooth. If you have a look underneath it, so more downwards um, on the edge of, of this little black muscle, you can see that the other siphon has quite a feathery structure. And I know then that this is the inhalant siphon. So how do I know this? Well, the inhalant siphon is the one that needs a filter, which is why it has this rugged feathery structure. Muscles will take down basically anything that comes by in the water column. So it needs a filtering system. And the first filter system is the inhalant siphon itself and the way that it's structured compared to the exhalant so siphon. Now, just notice what happens with the particles in the water when they come across these two different siphons. So on the bottom, you have the smooth exhalant siphon and on the top you have the more rocketed inhalant siphon. You can actually see that the particles coming by the exhalant siphon will be pushed out in the water, while the ones that comes close to the inhalant siphon that's more rocketed, well, that will actually be drawn into the muscle. Now, an interesting fact about the filtration of muscles a muscle such as the green lip muscle can filter up to nine liters an hour. That is a lot of water that goes through. Muscles can be quite juicy about what they actually will eat. So the labial palp and the gills will sort through whatever particles comes in the water that the muscle takes in. And most of it, such as mud and sand, well, they will actually be bound up in a mucus plug and be excreted. Now let's just take a closer look at the foot. So the foot itself is very interesting. So first and foremost, as I showed in the little black muscles, it can be used to move around. And it also has glands attached to it, which discrete the bissel thread. You can actually see right here. And there's also the visceral mass attached to the foot that has a lot of different glands and compartments for digestion, intestine, reproduction, and then the bristle threads here. So what we'll start to look at is the mantle. Now, this part right here, all this soft body tissue that you can see around the inner organs in here, well, that is the mantle. So if you've ever eaten green lip mussels on a restaurant, you know that as soon as you open the shell, you see this kind of orange, thick, fleshy part that surrounds the, the inner body, and that is the mantle. Now, right next to the mantle are these very thin structures right here. You can see here on both sides, and those are the gills. So when water comes in and runs over the gills, it will run in the opposite direction of what the blood does inside the gills. In that way, you'll have two streams of fluid running in the opposite direction, the water with the oxygen and the blood that needs the oxygen. And by them having the opposite direction in their flow, they create what's called a countercurrent. And that is a way to optimize the influx of and diffusion of oxygen from the water and to the blood. So I just want to show you the white part up here, right there, this very thick and very, very strong, dense muscular part. And there is one here on the opposite side as well. It's actually the same muscle that's attached on both sides of the shell. This is the adductor muscle, and it's the strongest muscle that holds these shells together. Burrowing bi bivalves, such as the cockle, they have two or more, but, but these kind of bivalves, such as the green lip muscle, they have a reduced anterior muscle down here, and their big posterior muscle, so the one you can see up here, that is used to hold the shells together. 
they do have a few muscles down here at the interior end and they're used to retract the bristle threads and keep the muscle close to the surface that it's attached on. Now just going back to what Alice talked about with the three different trays for a mollusk, that was the head, the strong muscular foot and the mantle. We've already seen the mantle, which was the outer part right here. And we've seen the strong muscular foot. The head itself is located where the mouth is on a muscle, which is down here in the anterior end. And it's, it's not a head that's visible, but you can see the mouth if you look really closely. And that's placed underneath the labial palps.